um, uh, first I would like to uh, welcome you to um, click into my class. Um, I'm sure that those who are here uh, would um, uh, would like to uh, see um, how I run my class um, because I've been talking. I've been the one talking about uh, giving uh, training to to lecturers using technology. Um, um, how to use uh, Teams? Uh, how do you how do you use Teams in, in classrooms and things like that? Um, so um, hopefully uh, with this session, um, I can uh, give you uh, a peek into um, how I design my Spectrum page. Uh, so I do my teaching mostly on Spectrum, uh, and I also uh, use Teams to run uh, synchronous sessions. So synchronous sessions. Uh, as in uh, the, 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 the I, I don't like to call it lecture actually because uh, I don't give lectures uh, so uh, I would say contact sessions okay so and, and that is this um, is another thing that um, maybe it's quite um, contentious uh, among lecturers con uh, the, the contact hours uh, which uh, I have my my own mind about it um, uh, but uh, let's um, continue with the, the, the program and then maybe um, we'll have a chat about that uh, the, the contact uh, contact session the contact hours uh, a little bit later okay so um, let me share my spectrum page first okay so um, my the way that I uh, design uh, it's on on my philosophy on on, on teaching uh, with uh, with the students, uh, especially now when we do it online, is that uh, I believe that uh, learning and teaching are two different things. Okay, so uh, a lot of people uh, like go in um, and um, start teaching, isn't it? But uh, I think uh, what I uh, really like to do with students is uh, I would like to design learning from the, uh, for them. Um, and when I say design learning, that means uh, uh, the, the classes that I run, um, I would try to, uh, by as much as possible, do asynchronous, asynchronous classes. I, I will go into the contact sessions uh, once in a while so that um, I can introduce new topics, for example, or I uh, get feedback from students because I, I believe that is where the, the interaction is, is really, really needed between me and students. And of course, I also think about um, uh, some of our students can't really afford to have um, like two hour um, data uh, for them to spare. Uh, and then uh, because uh, I sympathize with um, other lecturers who I think might not be um, confident enough uh, or comfortable enough to to help to 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 let the students uh, learn uh, without them teaching, uh, so I by as much as possible I try to do my classes with the students uh, asynchronously, uh, so that then uh, the students can um, uh, allocate their, uh, their their data uh, for the lecturers who uh, like to do face to face teaching. Okay, um, I do believe uh, actually in the value of face-to-face -face teaching, especially uh, those who can tell stories, good stories, uh, which I'm, I think I'm, I'm probably quite, uh, uh, quite struggling with that. I'm, I'm, I'm bad at telling stories. Um, you can ask my kids. I'm really, really bad at telling stories. Um, so I, I let the my 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 course page uh, uh, tell the story to my students. So, uh, uh, so to so to speak, it's like that. Okay, so um, this is my uh, spectrum page. So this is uh, the the class that I had just now with um, with my second year students. So it's a uh, it's a it's a class uh, on uh, procurement uh, and specification. So in built environment, uh, my, my department uh, we uh, we teach um, uh, we teach um, uh, building surveying students um, in my department. So I'm the one teaching them uh, procurement. So that means building procurement is different than 
uh, buying your uh, sort of uh, water bottle or handphones. The procurement is uh, a little bit more complex. You have different parties, uh, and then you have uh, you have complex processes as well. So uh, that's what makes procurement quite a challenging um, subject for the for the students as well. So uh, I teach procurement, and so I teach building specifications. How do you specify um, buildings? Um, quality of buildings to uh, to the, the contractors so that then they can actually uh, go and buy things that uh, corresponds to the quality that you want. So, so this class um, is for second year students. Uh, so uh, I normally design uh, the, the, the spectrum page is quite, um, quite straightforward. Uh, I like to use the uh, uh, flexible sections um, format in my spectrum. And the, the reason why I, I like to use uh, flexible sections is because it keeps the spectrum page really, really tidy. Uh, because here, like, like this one, uh, the students will not see the whole um, like long contents like this. So this is actually quite quite long content, isn't it? Uh, but it's not that long. There are uh, content that are uh, much, much longer. So like this one. So uh, when, by having flexible sections, uh, what I can do is, let's say this one, when I click on this, it will open up to a different page. So what this does to the students psychologically is that uh, they only focus on that one page of uh, the learning or the topic that they need to do. So that is how um, I, I design um, most of my spectrum pages um, so that then uh, it focuses the students on what they need to do and uh, what they uh, what they need to learn on that page. So, uh, uh, so we are only in the second week just now. Um, so uh, this is uh, what I uh, designed for the students. So uh, there will be normally uh, two or three uh, sections in uh, the, the spectrum page that I have. The first one, I always make sure that uh, I tell them uh, the, the learning outcomes expected for that topic. Um, and sometimes uh, learning outcomes will differ uh, according to the weeks because uh, the next week uh, I would uh, have a separate learning outcome that follows on from uh, the, 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 the week's learning outcome. Please unlock your device first. Um, and then, um, uh, so this is the, the, the learning material. For, for this week, it's quite, quite simple. So uh, as I said, uh, I like to use technology. I like to uh, embed um, uh, technology into uh, my learning, uh, my, my learning design. So um, I, I, for, I sort of follow uh, what I saw in MOOC platforms uh, in, in designing uh, the learning uh, experience for the students. And, and, and I also have uh, got the chance to uh, join international projects uh, in, de in designing learning platforms. Um, so uh, I, I find that they uh, follow quite a similar, similar style where they give you the text and then they give you a short video or a short presentation and it follows on with the text. So uh, the, the readers or the learners uh, actually follows the learning step by step um, based on what you've written and what you've presented. Uh, and I find that this is um, uh, quite uh, powerful because it uh, allows the students to think uh, about the, the learning uh, very linearly. Uh, I know because we uh, uh, PhD holders uh, uh, people with doctorate can actually think in multi-directional, uh, but uh, for students, uh, we want to keep the, the learning design for them uh, simple because then they will be able to follow uh, the learning. So a uh, step-by-step approach to me, I think works uh, very, very well. So uh, this is um, a video that I provided um, in uh, Prezi. Uh, so let me uh, un, um, unshare the screen. And then reshare because uh, if I play this, you will not be able to hear the sound uh, because I did not uh, enable the audio sharing just now. Uh, let me do this. Okay. 
Okay, so hopefully now you'll be able to hear it. So, uh, again, this is embedded by Prezi. Have, have you, uh, anybody here uh, have used Prezi before? Can I have a show of hand? So you just uh, go to your uh, teams and then just click on the uh, the smiley face with the hand button and just, um, just raise your hand or put any uh, any mark in there. Can you can you can you try and do that? Or so we have how many people here? Okay, so um, so we have thirty three in this one. So, uh, can you find the uh, the button that I uh, that I'm referring to in your teams? So click the the smiley face with the hand, and then click on either raise hand or or like or applause or whatever. Okay, so, okay, so Simon and Vino uh, has found the button. So just everybody just click anything in there so that I, I know that you found the button, uh, you find the button. Okay, uh, right. Okay, thank you. Okay, very good. So, um, so this is, um, hello and salam alaikum. So today we are going to look at building. Okay, so this is uh, what um, uh, I, I did uh, with the, the students. So I did uh, this week. I did not give. Um, uh, I didn't. I did not have a face-to-face -face contact session. So I uh, prepared the the learning uh, materials for them uh, with a short video. So it's only um, uh, close to fifteen minutes, just to introduce the topic, and then. Uh, uh, after that, I designed the, uh, the, the the presentation again with Prezi. So this is actually quite an old uh, Prezi presentation. If you if you look at the dates, it's actually from 2019. Uh, it's still still useful. Um, and then I also um, embedded uh, the text to 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 this uh, to describe to the students uh, what are the procurement uh, about. Then of course um, one uh, so this this last one is the uh, the different choice of procurements that's available for uh, for the construction industry. So you have uh, the different methods uh, of procurement. Um, so that is uh, for the um, for the first part, which is the, the learning material. Okay, and then uh, for every learning material, there will be uh, the learning task. Okay, so the learning task is where the students actually uh, show their learning uh, and show uh, uh, their understanding. Okay, um, and I also use uh, the learning task for me to take attendance. Okay, um, I like to take um, useful attendance. I would say useful attendance because uh, by taking attendance with the learning task, uh, what uh, I get with the students is it's not just them taking um, uh, empty attendance. So empty, em uh, I don't have a better word for it, but uh, empty uh, attendance. That means you just take attendance for attendance sake. So I always take attendance by giving the, the students things to do uh, because it achieves two things. One, I know what they are learning. And two, I get the attendance. Uh, I, I understand and I realize it's uh, it's a little bit um, sort of here and there. That means uh, when the audit comes and uh, suddenly say, okay, uh, let's show me attendance, uh, then I have to you know, scramble and find uh, all those uh, activities that students did. But um, to me, audit is secondary. The, the first thing that, that, that is uh, important to me is that uh, I teach and I know the students are learning. That's why I don't take uh, empty attendance. Um, I always give the students things to do, and I I get the attendance from them because uh, that is uh, I mean um, there are I think there are two things um, that we need to be able to differentiate us teaching and them learning, isn't it? 
So, um, and I focus on them learning. So, uh, uh, so that then I know that uh, they are uh, learning. Okay. So uh, apart from uh, having the learning task for them to do, um, uh, to do. Uh, so this is for asynchronous classes. For synchronous classes, what I uh, normally do is uh, again uh, in contact sessions. Uh, so let's say we have uh, uh, two hour contact session. So I would normally um, like talk for probably 20 minutes and then I would give things for them to do in the class uh, using Teams. Uh, remember Teams, now we can have breakout rooms and everything, isn't it? So that's, that's um, very good. But before having breakout rooms, I already use um, like a quasi uh, breakout room using uh, Teams channel. So um, again, um, the, the learning design is for them to uh, show their learning, how, uh, what they understand and what they don't understand. And I had, a, I, would, uh, I would say, an interesting uh, session uh, uh, from last semester because I started to heavily embed uh, uh, feedback and reflection with the students. And I find that uh, because uh, my, my, my faculty, my department, we are um, quite a very technical uh, course and very technical uh, students. Uh, if you train them uh, to give uh, or to write reflection, they, they are actually able to write good reflections. Uh, and even more, even so that um, you can have um, uh, a reflective practice as part of the, um, the final assessment. So uh, let me show you uh, the uh, final assessment that I did uh, with one of the classes. And I use, um, I use reflective practice for uh, the uh, the, the final assessment. So uh, we don't uh, use, uh, we don't do final exam, we do final assessment and I gave, actually gave the uh, the students um, work to do uh, for a week so that then they can finish that as a final assessment based on reflective practice. Okay, so can you see my Dropbox? Can you see my Dropbox? Are you still seeing? Okay, okay very good. Okay, uh, thank you, Simon. All right, so this is um, uh, my final uh, assessment for last uh, semester. So BIB 2006 is, um, uh, uh, the, the, the topic is um, uh, building the pathology. So building pathology is uh, um, the science of what goes wrong in buildings. Um, so when you see the spots of black uh, on, on your walls or your, or your windows or your ceiling, um, so that is, uh, we, we discover the science behind that. So, uh, so that is uh, what I taught uh, last, last semester. So this is uh, uh, the, the final alternative assessment that we, that we designed um, for the students. We gave them a week to do and we, um, we designed it with the rubrics. Um, and a portfolio. Uh, so this is based on a portfolio. We, des we design it based on uh, rubric. Uh, and I always believe that uh, when you do assessment with the students, the rubrics is very important uh, because uh, when you give rubrics, you tell the students, so uh, you need to uh, target for the, the, high, the, 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 highest, uh, the highest mark, isn't it? And we, we, we are being very specific about what gives them uh, the highest mark, okay? Um, and we also tell them what are uh, the ones that does not uh, achieve or meet our expectation. So they are very clear, uh, so much so that they will be able to self-grade um, themselves. So that is the, the, the one that uh, you I always wanted to, to impress the students. I always tell the students, so this is the rubrics for you. Target for the highest one and work on uh, getting your materials or your work to the highest one so that then um, 
when I grid and when you grid, it's going to be the same mark. So, uh, okay, so uh, where was that? Okay, so uh, again, uh, it, um, we, it, it's useful with the, so that we tell them what, what are the outcomes um, and what are the uh, rubrics. Okay, uh, so these are the instructions. And uh, this is mostly on uh, reflective practice. So what we did uh, last semester, we, uh, we we thought about the, having the, the, the portfolio uh, reflective um, session uh, very, very early on in the semester. And um, we were, the, me and my, my, my teaching team, uh, me and Dr. Rizal, uh, we, was thinking, we were thinking that it is, um, it is untested before. Uh, having technical students do reflective work is untested before. So we need to train them to be able to do it. And we design uh, a series of scaffolding uh, assessments. Okay, so that means we train them how to do reflective writing. And we guide them um, at least three times before we uh, give them this final uh, marked assessment with reflective writing in uh, the, 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 the assessment design. So, uh, and those, those three uh, training sessions. Um, I think only one was uh, given continuous assessment mark, but the two uh, this, this does not. Uh, actually, help the students to to develop uh, their their skills in writing, and uh, for uh, the professionals, uh, the building survey building surveying professionals, um, the ability to write reports clearly to the client uh, when they graduate is is really important, and that's why we wanted to train them to. Uh, to do uh, report writing uh, very very early on so i think that's um, how we we sort of uh, designed the whole um, assessment for this um, uh, subject uh, the ib206 based on this uh, reflective writing uh, and uh, we make it clear what we want in in here so uh, if you look at uh, part one so uh, we have a, a four parts portfolio so part one um, talks about um, uh, the work process uh, that they go through as a community member of the group. Okay, talk two, uh, 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 and then uh, part two uh, talk about um, how they uh, learn. So we, we design the question so that they will be able to um, navigate how uh, they learn uh, in, in this. And so, and then part three is um, uh, where uh, we wanted to uh, also talk about the, the, the content. So uh, what do they get in terms of content uh, uh, in their, their assessment? And then uh, last one is um, uh, the learning experience, okay, uh, towards the deep learning. So we, and we always talk about this um, in, in our the context session with the students. Uh, the the reason why we do things uh, in the class, and of course, uh, like uh, for me and uh, for my uh, for my teaching partner Rizal, we sort of learn this um, uh, at, um, from from a very painful point of view, because uh, when we first um, uh, created the uh, the the unconventional teaching. Uh, what happened, the students don't understand about it. And when they don't understand, they uh, they are very resistant and we got really bad test marks. And then um, after that, so we, we met the students the next semester and we actually have a, 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 a conversation about uh, that. Um, the why, why was it um, a bad experience for the students? And uh, part of the feedback that we get is that uh, they are, they don't understand why we shifted from a conventional um, uh, I teach you learn uh, I teach and I don't know what uh, whether you learn or not um, method to uh, we are designing you are designing this for you to learn um, uh, and um, that's the that's one funny comment that I got. Um, in the, the C test, you remember when we do C test, there will be uh, students comment feedback comments. Uh, so one comment uh, says uh, something like this: um, "I had to learn 
all this um, myself. Um, it's not, it's, uh, so it's, it's also like, um, something about um, having to learn everything in the in the classroom, uh, uh, and that is uh, what design. That what's going to university going to university is that uh, going to university is actually you learning. It's not me teaching. So um, and that is a student who who are giving bad comments. So. Uh, uh, of course, after 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 that, we uh, went back uh, and uh, talked to the students, have a conversation about uh, their feedback. Uh, of course, we don't name names. Uh, because we, we don't know names anyway uh, in, in CTES. Um, and that actually helps us to understand that uh, uh, they are resistant because um, some one they don't they are not used to it. Uh, they are used to having sitting two hours in passive lectures uh, and then going to the exam um, at the end of the semester so uh, uh, we had to tell them so this is uh, a process that uh, we learn from a literature from the literature so uh, we are we are researchers not just in our field uh, of work or field of, of research we are also researchers in uh, in teaching and learning what gives the student um, uh, the best learning experience and actually, uh, the the group that um, that, that was first um, having that that experience, uh, they did very very well. Before before we had the we had, we had the change to the active and collaborative learning um, experience that we designed, uh, there will be three four students um, easily every semester that fills the, the 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 class. But once we move to the active learning. Uh, collaborative learning approach that we had uh, for this um, uh, for this class, we had no nobody failed, nobody failing. Um, there is one or two uh, maybe you we'll get C sometimes, but uh, generally the students are uh, content and uh, they did very very well. So so that's uh, I think um, important when when we shift. Uh, our learning approach, uh, our teaching approach. We need to tell the students where this is coming from and uh, what they will get from it so that then they will be more, acceptab uh, more acceptable uh, to, to the new uh, learning approach for them. Okay, so I actually plan to talk for half an hour and then uh, uh, get um, the, the Q&A for the last uh, 10 minutes, but let me uh, uh, continue for another three or four minutes before we go into that okay so um again even in the the final assessment we give them um, a content example content response okay so uh, what we expected from uh, the uh, from the portfolio that they write in their respective uh, uh, learning so uh sample setting is quite it's quite good for uh, for the students to to frame their mind uh, of course um, we have actually trained them in the classroom uh, for uh, at least three times about how to do uh, the, the reflective so and we give feedback for the students and i think that's another thing that i i i the process that i believe um, uh, useful for the students is uh, giving feedback and uh, i still am uh, learning how to be more efficient with uh, giving feedback uh, to the students because it's giving feedback actually takes time uh, takes effort and i think um, one thing that i learned uh, in the past few uh, weeks um, is um, students uh, since they are at home uh, and they are learning by themselves uh, we need to uh, give them the opportunity to collaborate with their uh, group members because giving feedback um, uh, for learning is one thing, but giving feedback to the to the to the learners, especially uh, supporting them at an emotional level, it's um, to me it's hard to do. Uh, probably because I'm a boy. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, um, um, so this is for for uh, for women lecturers. Uh, they are more in tune with the emotional side. So. Um, uh, giving emotional feedback uh, that uh, helps with the effective domain for students is much more impactful to, to them not 
uh, but not to me. Or probably it's just me personally. Uh, uh, maybe because I'm, I come from like a, like a professional uh, background. I work in the industry for, uh, for, for five years before joining academia. So uh, it's very, um, uh, very, uh, I would say manly feedback, very objective. Uh, you got to do A, B, C. Uh, you don't do uh, B, C, D. Uh, so, um, and the reason is because of this. So I don't have that the emotional input that I can uh, give to support the students. Probably that's uh, my uh, my weakness that I, I, I need to work on. Um, okay, so uh, let's just finish this. Uh, give me one more minute. So um, I tend to design um, uh, the, the classroom uh, like that. Um, in so, so again, so like this one, uh, again, you have the, the, the lesson and then you have the learning class and then you have the resources. And if you look at through uh, uh, um, my my courses, uh, no, normally it would look like this. It's very sequential. Again, the, the, uh, the, the professional mind, um, so very step by step, uh, you do one, two, three. These are the, the things that you need to do. Uh, these are the, uh, the resources, for example, because resources that you can uh, work on or look at to uh, to understand um, further. Uh, so I don't uh, I don't give lectures. I don't give lecture notes uh, to my class. Um, uh, what I give them um, are the resources that I use to uh, design the, the learning. So uh, if I use somebody's um, like I I sometimes even um, get um uh people's other people's powerpoint uh i just, just put there I, I don't i don't use it i don't use it uh to teach i just put it as part of the resources so uh, so that then the student can really go through uh the the resources uh, themselves um but i normally design uh my my classes using uh the page so page uh, is um, in, in in spectrum you use page and page is where uh, uh, then you can embed things you can put in text uh, in between things like that so this is um, this is based on um, a blend space uh, so a blend space is, a, is now it's an old technology already okay so I think um, uh, let's uh, stop there so I sort of um, uh, run over a, a few minutes more. Um, so uh, let's have um, Q and A session um, before we end at ten forty, so that then I can give time to the next person, uh, uh, Doctor Norain, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to um, show her class. Oh, Norain, sorry, huh? is it? Uh, I, I, I don't remember who's going. Who's going, who's going next? Okay, so uh, yes, I'm open. I'm opening the the floor for you. Just open your mic, and you can ask. Hi, Dr. Zahe. We know you. Good morning to you. Hi, we know. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to know what you're doing in your spectrum. Uh, I just have uh, like uh, maybe a question to ask you. How do you think about your students' acceptance when you know you're not providing students with any notes? You know, some students, not every students. They tend to be like spoon feed, like they need everything to be very systematically, like PowerPoint, handout, slides. So, because they want to use it uh, during the exams uh -huh. uh, time. So now, since you are bringing a new thing, uh, it's a new thing for students, and it's sometimes it's a new thing for the lecturers as well. Uh, not providing students with um, very systematic kind of like uh, notes, right? So, how do you see your students' acceptance at this point of time? Like you just guiding them where to find the the learning materials uh, you are just providing them the ways right which is very good uh, so how do you see your students acceptance on this actually um, i've had uh, quite a number of feedback sessions with my students over the years uh, with regards to me not giving them uh, powerpoint slides or any slides uh, for, for that matter um, and uh, i think after they have understood uh, the reason why i did that uh, the reason why i don't give them the PowerPoint slides and the, and the notes, uh, they are they are actually uh, quite accepted, uh, quite quite a good acceptance to it. Uh, there are uh, a few uh, from previous years who say, uh, uh, still, uh, please give me uh, lecture notes or uh, any notes of uh, any kind. Uh, and I, I tell them, actually, uh, my spectrum page is your notes. 
you would not get uh, anything better than that uh, in terms of uh, in terms of um, point to point um, information because um, to me again uh, I, and I uh, I had this conversation with the with the students. Um, information and knowledge are two different things, and I subscribe to the constructivist approach. So they have to build their own knowledge. It's fine if they want to create their own notes uh, based on the reading materials that that I give them. Uh, I don't uh, I don't mind if they do that. Um, and in even some in in some of the uh, collaborative work in class that I. Uh, ask them to do is um, uh, you prepare a presentation using PowerPoint so that we, that then becomes your note. So when they do their presentation, again, feedback is very important. Um, I give them feedback uh, there and then uh, what's wrong, uh, what's right, uh, what's good and what's bad so that then they will be able to improve on their notes. And when they do presentation, uh, one thing uh, we need to remember is that the whole class is listening. So the whole class actually learns from your feedback to the students. So that's why uh, uh, I believe that when students are giving giving presentation, it's very, very important that everybody listens and you give feedback there and there. So that is how I uh, sort of um, uh, go over the challenge of uh, students asking for uh, slides. Yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Good question. Um, anyone else? Uh, Dr. Zahir? Yes. Uh, this is uh, Lina. Uh, when you uh, mentioned this now, uh, you always check uh, and balance with uh, the students giving the feedbacks on uh, your teaching yes. Yes. Uh, and learning. Um, may I ask, uh, in within our 14 weeks, do you always check and balance and ask students um, the progress and um, how is the uh, teaching and learning uh, a journey from them and then from there you pick it up or is, is it from the C test or is it after the semester end? Okay, uh, thank you uh, Dr. Azina. So um, actually um, I designed uh, specifically uh, the time for feedback. Uh, so there will be a compulsory feedback session in the middle of the semester for the students. So I will not miss that. So uh, that, uh, and apart from that, uh, I will um, ask feedback, uh, especially in during the tutorial, tutorial sessions, uh, uh, when uh, I give them work to do. So just now, like like today, when I did the uh, the, the class with the students, uh, the tutorial with the students. I actually go in and then ask them uh, how was the the, the learning design, uh, how are, how are they coping? So those are those kind of feedbacks is, uh, to me is actually very very important. So that then I will be able to uh, know what kind of uh, state the students are in with regards to um, their access to the learning materials, their understanding to the to the topic, and um, um, how they are progressing in the course. So uh, I will have that uh, feedback, and I uh, nowadays I don't really look at the C test uh, feedback uh, so, uh, so so critically because uh, I know that I have, I have designed the feedback session uh, in such a way that I can actually get uh, give them help there and then because uh, when you do when you look at C test you you cannot really uh, go back to the class, isn't it? C test is after we finish, so. Uh, and to me, uh, you can only bring that forward to uh, the, the next class. But for feedback that you do during the semester, uh, the middle semester or some uh, during the, the tutorial session, you can actually do something about it. You can actually uh, amend your, your classes or your, your teaching so that then you um, address the concerns of the students or you can uh, justify things that you do with the students. Does that help uh, answer the question? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Zahir, because I think it's a bit difficult to manage when you have um, a, 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 a large 
uh, what do you call that? Uh, yes. Students, uh, you have many tutorials and number of students in your lecture. Uh, in terms of getting them to engage. Yes, uh, I think um, I'm, I've been lucky in terms that um, my class uh, normally would not um, be more than um, 40. So uh, it's, it's hovering around 40, 40 plus. So I still can actually engage with them properly. Um, uh, I know that people, uh, they are those who are teaching uh, 100, 200 uh, classes. Uh, sorry, 200, 200, uh, 100, 200 students yeah, in a session. So I have no, um, uh, I have no idea how to uh, engage with the students on that. But I think uh, the face-to-face -face session is is quite good. And sampling probably might uh, might help. So that means you just sample people from different tutorial sessions to get feedback. All right. Thank you, Dr. Zahir. Okay, no problems. So uh, let's have one last question. Uh, and then I'll uh, uh, surrender the session to uh, the next person. Or if there's no question, I can surrender the, the, the session now. Let me check who's... <laughs> uh, I don't remember who's uh, supposed to be uh, on after me. Uh, the name, prop, the proper name. Uh, something, doctor, no something. Um, Dr. Zahir, you have a question for, uh, in your meeting chat. Oh, is it? Sorry, I did. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so I'll, ask, I'll answer this question and then um, I'll, I'll keep the session to, to the next person. Okay, uh, Dr. Wendy, how much time do you spend preparing for a class for the entire semester? Um, I spent the entire semester. <laughs> so um, I I started off um, normally about two weeks before, um, and then I would actually uh, continue for the whole semester preparing for the class. Uh, it's because um, I'm, I'm also here in, in edX, so um, I have to manage my time uh, between doing academic work and also doing uh, the administrative work. Uh, then we have this question, uh, uh, how do you prepare for summative assessments? Are there exams? No, um, there's no exam. I, I don't like giving an exam. I don't even like giving tests uh, to the students. I would uh, uh, actually uh, design an assessment that uh, to me is, is much more meaningful um, to the students, so where I can give them feedback. And then, uh, so one last question, that's too much food for students that is close guidance increase their dependency, dependency on us, then the efforts are confident. Um, I think if we, if we give um, uh, lecture notes and PowerPoint slides, that is too much food. Uh, that is uh, what, I, what I, I think. Uh, it's because when, when you give them PowerPoint slides, you will find that that is the only thing that they depend on. They will not go in and look at any other any other things. And that is uh, my my experience. Okay, so I uh, hope that helps, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Tang. Uh, so thank you very much. I give this um, session back to uh, our uh, uh, host uh, Umu, and you can take it from here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Doctor Zahi. That was a very insightful session. Um, we give him the 40 minutes <laughs> and for sure it's not enough. Uh, all right, uh, next speaker, can we have um, Dr. Nurul Aini? Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, um, you can share your screen. Uh, so with the PowerPoint, I just browse, upload from my computer, is that right? right. So we'll take a few seconds. When into my class, okay. Still uploading. Uh, is it loading? <laughs> Sharing or something? Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Oh, uh, coming up. Begin to my.
right take some time sorry hi we can see your screen uh, we can see your powerpoint now i can't see my powerpoint <laughs> oh, um it's on uh, the all right it's here it's here all right okay uh assalamualaikum and good morning everyone my name is nurul aini abu shamsi i'm from the department of science and technology studies faculty of science first and foremost thank you very much edek for and umu for inviting me um to this speak into my class much addition i consider myself as a very new lecturer i've joined university of malaya as a senior lecturer in 2019 um but um in the in 2010s so i work as a tutor and then i went for my phd and now i'm back as a lecturer so um pick into my class um basically an overview what i'm going to do today is i'm just going to give you an overview how i conduct my class where are the things in my spectrum a bit on the assignments and some of the activities um so um bear um pardon me if along the way i i cough because i'm not that i'm not feeling that well but i'm um, still okay um thank you for all who are here um so i hope this sharing uh, i hope that whatever i share um you know not only it will benefit um the audience but also will benefit me because um as i go along with my lecture i notice that um there are there are things that i need to improve there are things that you know after the reflection session after the class it was like yesterday after i had a synchronous class i was like i was like there was a boring session for me at least because i thought that i was the only one who's been talking and i really kind not happy with doing all the talking so that's why i have numbers of activities in my class so let's just start with the overview uh, before i start i know i'm from the faculty of science but my department is actually an interdisciplinary field um i would consider myself even though i am trained in biotechnology um health sciences um i have i have lab work as my um, degree but then i venture into science and technology studies so i'm basically will consider myself as a social science of the science and technology so science and technology studies scs is basically an interdisciplinary field that aims to understand and influence how society shapes science and technology how it turns science and technology um how in turn it science and technology shapes society and the environment so in our department we have um like a various vast um experts we have people who are expert in ethics of science um who are um very um who are who do study in policy public policy uh, policy in science um in technology um uh, people who do works on sustainability science um what else environment um um history and philosophy of science where where i am actually standing in the science co science communication so i I would consider myself not as a science communicator. I'm not one doing the communication between science to the public, but looking at that field and see and you know study what are the things happening, what to do to improve the science communication. So, and in my department, I have been teaching um, introduction to science and technology studies. So that subject is a core faculty core course. So the whole faculty science. um students have to take that uh, that subjects um so it's basically we're giving um these students a different perspective when looking into science rather than thinking of science as a lab work um we are giving them we, we want them to see science as um what are the history of science what are the philosophy behind the science um also how do we communicate science what are the current strategy of science in the uh, in malaysia in the world um what are rnds all these first year students they have no idea what rnd or uh, rnd is they are thinking about going to the lab do the lab work and come out as a scientist but they don't have an idea where does this work i mean can contribute into our development of the country so that's the introduction to science and technology studies i also thought history a world history of science which is something that i'm interested in but something that i have to invest it in because it's not my background not my strong background also i uh, also i teach in media 
public understanding and sustainability science and science communication. So those are what the things that I have thought. And now I'm look, going to look at the main platform, the overview of my class. I use Spectrum um, and WhatsApp. So Spectrum is basically where I would call it as a formal documentation. So I'm a bit different than Dr. Zahir just now because he said that he uses Spectrum and not for the sake of audit. Where I am, as a new lecturer, um, I use Spectrum um, so that everything is there, so that students can find anything that they want, um, they can navigate it easily, as well as if the audit, and I used to be the one who chosen to be audited, um, uh, my Spectrum. So I make, I make sure that the Spectrum is easy to navigate to the auditor as well, um, and as well, you know, the spectrum is at the end of the day is what our KPI is based on. So for me, rather than doing numbers of work, um, just do it once and do it well. Um, so in my spectrum, I'm just going to show you my spectrum and how do I do this? Um, probably stop presenting, Umu. Is that all right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used with Microsoft Teams. I um, usually use uh, Google's thing for my work. So. Um, uh, Wait, how do I do this? Sorry, <laughs> should have. Um, so with my spectrum, I usually uh, is this uh, is it the spotlight? So Doctor Kenapia, uh, I actually need to share my screen. So how you, how do I do that? Sorry, um, that's just uh, just unshare this then. Oh, go for window, is it? Right. Stop. Stop. Hmm. Ayuh, yo. Okay. Okay. Um, let me. Can you see my window? Um, not yet. Uh, and... um, perhaps you can unshare and share again. Oh, uh, now we can see. Okay, now you can see the window, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's showing teams, correct? Okay, so if I show now my spectrum, does it? comes as my spectrum? Um, no. Uh, can you unshare? <laughs> when you share, can you choose your desktop? Okay, so I stop share. Right. Share content and desktop. Share desktop. Yes. So go for screen one. Is that right? Right, we yeah. can see your spectrum now. All right, so okay. welcome to my spectrum. This is science, communication and society. So this is usually what you see in my spectrum at the end of the semester, especially with the online class where you're going to have information on the summative assessment. Um, but usually when you come to my spectrum, you're going to see the welcome to the WhatsApp, um, welcome, join the WhatsApp group. And then I will have the week one introduction and the rest of the performer. So week one is really like um, something relaxed for me. But this is where I would like to share the pre-recorded lecture for week two. Oh, don't go. Um, sorry. So this is what I usually come up with for my pre-recorded lecture. So I prepare my pre-recorded lecture in um, um, PowerPoint and then, you know, uh, with the PowerPoint, you can embed your video in it and then you can, you can, sh you can, you can present it and with your video, with your face in it. And then I save it as MP4 and then I upload it on YouTube. And then I, prepare my lecture this way. So I would have a Google site, so you can access to Google site as we are all um, 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 Gmail user. We can have this. Um, so bear with me with all this um, lack of, you know, the internet thing. So um, for Google site, in case if you're not, um, if you're not, um, used to it. Um, so here you can go to sites and then you can um, choose one. You can choose anything, but I usually just go for a very simple one. I, so this is uh, the <clears throat> classes that I have. Um, so here in Google site, you can, um, you okay, so it will you give you something like this where you can um, edit it, upload it. Um, it has, I don't know which one, oh yeah, this one, this editing, editing part. So rather than posting all of the video, 
as an URL or as a label on the spectrum, I would actually like to have my spectrum clean and clear. So I would just say spectrum is where my student get the sources, but this is where the main information is. Um, so I uh, so here you can edit it based on all this part here. You can insert the layout. You can choose the layout. So this is where I usually upload my YouTube video. So I have my own YouTube video. And then um, with the thing with the Google site is I um, break all my lecture usually into about 10 minutes. Um, I try not to go more. The thing with YouTube, if, if it's more than I think more than 15 minutes or more than 20 minutes, um, they won't upload it. And the good part of it is that, you know, students can have a short amount of time and then they can have a break. And then even though you think it's a 10 minutes um, lecture, they actually probably they takes more time to digest it. So 10 minutes, I think is quite a good um, duration for uh, each part of the lecture and then so uh, for each lecture I have um, I give them what are the things that I want to highlight that, um, so that they know what they are going to see in that lecture so that's my spectrum um, so that's usually what, what I do with the pre-recorded lecture um, so with that I'm just gonna stop sharing this and continue back to my um, continue back to my PowerPoint. Hmm, it's not here. No way. Browsed. What? Mm -hmm. Can I just get go access back to my PowerPoint just now, or do I have to browse uh -huh. it? It again. Then you can uh, you you can just share your desktop just now. Uh -huh. We can see everything on your desktop. Oh, all right, so it's just so I don't have yeah. to you know. Oh, so you can see it here, right? Right, right. Oh, cool. uh, now we are seeing your face. Can you share your desktop again? Right. Sure. So desktop. So it's coming. Uh, yes, it's right. coming. Cool. Right, so um, so that's the overview of my so that's my spectrum. Other than um, so I use YouTube to upload my le pre-recorded lecture note, um, Google site for my um, so yeah, uh, Google site for my pre-recorded lecture note, and also um, if it's live class, I usually go Google Meet. I don't know why, but probably I need to learn more about Microsoft Teams. But I tried it once, and then I have problems with my students. So we just end up, um, let's just go with Google Meet and then because it's easier for everyone. So maybe I should learn uh, more on uh, Teams so that, you know, I can use it um, more efficiently next time. So with the WhatsApp, as you can see, my spectrum was quite um, was quite dry compared to Dr. Zahir. Dr. Zahir's because his was like he has numbers of discussion there, but mine is like this is this, 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 this is what. So what I actually do in my spec, uh, what I, how do I actually um, connect with my student is through WhatsApp. So every class, we will, I will give them instruction. I'll say, hi, this is uh, our class. You're expected to go through this pre-recorded lecture. And if you have any questions, um, this is where I usually found problems with because students, they don't come up when they have um, problems. But then later on, they will say, can we have a session? To have a QA, but I'm like, I thought that you can give me any question. Um, but anyway, so um, this is where I usually interact with my students. I will let them know um, what's happening in the class, whether um, I will um, give them a very long um, instruction of what's happening, what are you expected to do uh, to this class, um, where you're going to get the information. So, everything. So, this is what happened. Um, so yeah, that's gonna take some time to get through. But you know what I mean. So um, I go, I use WhatsApp for my, um, for my class, for my interaction, um, and also apart from that, um, that's just an overview of my class. So, um, for for assignment, especially, um, I noticed because 
we do not, we can, we, I mean, not we, I tend to have presentation in my class. So because of that, we are doing online class. We, I choose to have video um, assignments. So with the video assignments, um, this is where I found um, with the video assignments, I think it's okay if it's a short, I mean, if the class is small, um, sometimes I do have like 24, 24, 20 students or more or less around that numbers. But when I did um, the subject on the core faculty course is where I have problems with um, because there were like about 200 students. So um, to track, firstly to track them that they must form a group, that's already a problem. So what I did was I, um, in the very first, in the very beginning, I asked them to give me their numbers so that if anything comes up, I can just simply text them. Um, um, and also, when they do, when I ask them to do a group formation, um, that group formation I done it online. So they just fill in their names with the group's number, and then they give uh, their phone numbers. Um, and then I have to double check with the spectrum participants um, who are not in the list. So those people who are not in the list will be contacted through email or through phone numbers. And then I have to allocate uh, them into groups. So um, the thing that I found with a group number of class is that it's very daunting. Um, not only you have to prepare for the classes, but also you have to do all these administrative class. But these are the things that I think that I have to ensure need to be done before by the end of the semester, there will be many problems at the end. Like um, I found that there are uh, there are possibility that there will be students towards the end of the class um, are not uh, don't have groups because they miss out the instruction in the very beginning. Um, and, you know, that's already um, worth of probably 40 percent or 30 percent of the class. Um, so that's why all this administrative work needs to be done, um, tracking them throughout the 14 weeks. Um, but then what I did not rather than throughout 14 weeks. Um, so I do a um, few stages of the video assignment. I asked them to come up with a proposal. So with the proposal, um, it looks like this. Let me, so this is um, the proposal looks like uh, this is progress. So this is the proposal look like. So I have I give them a, a template so they will need to fill this up, give them objective. So you know, rather than giving them instruction and I expect you to have this video at the end of semester and submit it, I want them to have a clear um, view on what they want to do. So uh, give them all these task delegation, video outline, schedule, so that um, this is just to track, um, this is just to give them a track so that they are on the right track. But it's also for me to make sure that um, we have the right students in the right class and the right numbers who are doing the assignments or else we will um, miss them um, sometimes in the semester. Um, this is the progress. So I do ask them to do video progress. Um, so with the, with the video progress, um, it's similar with the proposal, but it's just that I will ask if there are any changes, they will um, add the, any changes. Um, if no, they will just say no like this. Um, and then this is what happened with the task delegation because um, this is where when we first had our MCO. So with the MCO, they have to change uh, the rules. They have to change how they do their work. And this is, um, so this is the week 10. This is more like checking whether they are doing their work or not, or maybe they're just, you know, just planning and not doing it. So they will tell us whether it's complete or not complete. And how I want and the best thing that I actually like is this part, the storyboard. So I just ask them um, briefly, let us know how, what are the storyboard and they will just, you know, explain to us um, uh, how, what are the storyboard of the video. So that's a video. I think um, with the large numbers of students um, and giving them assignment like a video is important to um, track them, not only track their work, but also track them, um, make sure that they are, um, you know, they are doing their work, not towards the end. Someone says that I don't have group, that's really frustrating. And then we have to give them, uh, you know, a different um, task. So also I am the kind of person who loves students to um, do public speaking. So in one of my class, I asked my student, this is what's because before MCO, I asked them to, um, because the subject is history of World history of science. So I asked them to come up with any story or any events or any personals that are important or significant in the development of science and technology. Um, 
so uh, there were the we had four class face to face class so there were four students managed to you know um, four or eight managed to give uh, a public speaking um you know on that topic but apparently after the mco what i asked them is to come up with a video um record yourself and then um, show to us how uh, what are the things that you are doing so this is an example how the students do so she talk about ceramic and uh, the invention of ceramics so um the good thing about this is an individual work and i do not expect them to come up with a very complicated video i just actually ask them to you know put on your video put on your camera and record yourself but some some of them do that some of them you know put an extra effort by making um you know having all these words while they're speaking or having all these um diagrams so which is good it showed their efforts and um i took you know, I um, mark this assignment. Another thing is also on the public speaking is voice note. Um, what I do is, this is voice note through WhatsApp. I ask them questions. Um, so the question will be posted on Spectrum and also on WhatsApp. And I ask them a question. I ask them to give me probably like one minute and explain to me, um, you know, explain the answer. So they will record the voice note and send it to the group. And then what I do is I listen to it um, and then I will comment back um, through voice note as well. So the good part is we we have a personal touch there. We uh, we discuss to this. I mean, we tell them what they do wrong and it's, you know, rather than some students love to be, you know, not only really some students, um, sometimes it's good to, you know, to mention what are the mistakes um, in the public, but sometimes because it's personal, it's easier to do this um, personally. But the problem with this task is that I think it's quite daunting because even though you have 20 students, um, marking will be easier, but if it's written work, but because it's fortunate, so I have to take my own, I, I do have to give my time to record my voice and also give them um, the feedback. So that's on assignment. So this is the activities. Um, so I'm the kind of person who easily get bored, to be honest, um, because pre-recording is for me is you know you I will record myself with the um, lecture notes on YouTube and then post it on the Google site, but I find it quite boring. <laughs> I can do it for two weeks, but I cannot do it for the third week. For the third week, I find I find it boring. So what I do is I just um, you know um, change things up. So I give some. A different activities for example i give them a reviewing activities so with my class um, apart from the pre-recording lecture i also give them tutorial questions so with the tutorial questions um i would ask them questions that are not in the lecture there are various number of type of questions there are questions like questions that are not available on the lecture notes and these questions are to me are factual questions that they can find easily on website so i actually ask them to search um, uh, answer for that and I also ask them question on the opinions let's say if I give them a video to watch I will ask what do you think about it and then how do you relate that to the theory that we learn or how do you think of this based on what we learn in the class so um, the good side of it is that you know in class we cannot get that in you know not everyone can give the opinion but if you do it on tutorial written uh, tutorial they will give it to you and then you will see um, you can see the different background of students, how, how certain students have a deep understanding or, or would like to have an inquisitive mind, but certain students are, you know, they just take it as it is. So um, it's interesting to see that and maybe for those who just take it as it is, is where I would like to, you know, to dive deep and get, go further and maybe, you know, this kind of students and then, you know, um, this is where the reviewing activities um, will further improve it. So let's say I know this kind of student will give me like a very surface answer. I will, with the reviewing activities, I will give them a set of questions and then I will ask um, them, I will ask the students to review their peer work. So this is how I do it. I give um, students, uh, so reviewing activities. So for today's tutorial, you will be reviewing your friend's answer on the last Tuesday activity, which is the tutorial question. 
So, um, so I number this, the, the answer. So each of the reviewer will have to review um, the answer. Um, so I, um, let me see. Uh, so this is how it looks like week six. <clears throat> so each of the students know which number they need to access. So I'll just take 21, um, number 21. But eventually they know the names because I did not delete each of the names for each of the answer. But at least it's not known for everyone. So for example, this one. So I have I, I give a questions and they provide the answer and the friends will give them marks and justify their marks. So um, the good part of this is it's kind of a collaborative work because you know with the online learning you you kind of like doing everything on your own but when you do this first thing you are doing you can look at your friends work secondly the feedback i think this is one of the very exciting work that i did with my students because they say that um um they can compare their answer with their friends and they can think that um they can learn more if the answer is better, but if the answer is less than theirs, they think that they are okay. So, but the good part is that they, you know, the, the interaction is what I would like to highlight. Um, they think that is good to, and then they said that it's good to have this, to have such activities more in the class. So I think my, our, our student this, with this online thing, they are yearning for, um interaction so i think this is one of the way that we can do it so review it too is my marks um so i also ask them to um i ask them to here i ask them share your thoughts and feeling on these activities how do you feel reading your friends work how do you think about these activities does it help you to understand more about the topic i think with the answer that i gave uh, with the answer that i received most of them found that it really helps their understanding um on that topic um, with the tutorial that I usually give to them that uh, mostly they are um, what is this um, with the tutorial that I usually give to them they are mostly um, they are mostly on Google form um, so this is what I say the factual uh, question so they need to search I also ask them the thing with the students when especially with the online class they usually just go and copy paste so for me, rather than just go and copy paste, I would like them to give me the reference where did you copy paste the answer. Some students are putting more effort. They, you know, they rephrase the answer, which is which is interesting to see the differences amongst your students. And then here, this is the kind of question that I will give. I would um, infuse my question, that my 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 lecture content with their daily life. I will ask how does media influence your daily life because the 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 the, the, con the topic was on power of mass media in you know changing your way of thinking, changing of your uh, influence your social and so on. So those are the kind of questions that I gave but I also infuse it with question like um, facts and factual because at the end of the day we want them to know certain things but we also would like to know how are the things that they learn today um, affect them um, because I think you know, um, having that kind of um, process in learning is more effective. Um, so yeah, and at the end of the day, I usually ask them reflection. What do they think uh, of the lecture and tutorial? And if they're usually, they will let me know if they have any problems with that. So um, the problem with this is that, like I think Dr. Zahir also mentioned it, is that um, giving feedback is a bit um, time consuming. Um, sometimes what I did was when I read all of it, uh, sometimes when I don't, if like that week was very busy, I would just go through their answer, make notes of it. And then in the class, I'll just highlight to them. Um, these are the things that most of you answer and what are the things that um, we can discuss about it, whether it's good, whether it's not good, whether we can improve about it. So um, if I cannot give personal um, feedback, I will give them like a, you know, um, like a general feedback in a class. So that's how I do my class. Um, so flip, flip classroom is something that I do like, um, not sure about you guys, but with, um, with the, with, even without the pandemic, without this online thing, I usually ask my student to prepare certain lecture. Um, so um, there are to date, there are two two ways that I do it. Um, when I ask them to prepare the lecture, 
is more like it's already assignment for them. So I give them sources and I also ask them to find any any other sources to add on. I give them list of the things that I want them to um, present. Um, so this is what I apply in his world history of science. So we went through all the civilizations and um, what happened in the civilization, what are the contribution of the civilization to, to the science and technology. So I asked, so I started with um, the beginning lecture I did the lecture, I did the Mesopotamian and the Egyptian. But when it comes to Indian, Chinese, China and the uh, Islamic civilization and also what else, uh, one more civilization I forgot. Um, so I asked them to prepare the lecture notes. So um, initially we want them to present, but then MCO. So what I did was, and then I did not expect them to present um, online because I afraid that they probably have problems with the internet. Um, so I just asked them to prepare the lecture notes and then I told them, OK, you're going to conduct the WhatsApp um, for today. So I uh, send, uh, give it over to them. So they they will ask the students whether they have problems and then students, I mean, their friends will have questions. I also have questions, you know, uh, so that if um, so that more more questions will come. So they were able to answer it. So it's more like flip classroom again. And then I also asked this group to prepare um, quizzes or any form of platform quiz um, so that um, they can, you know, they can, they learn how to do quiz online and then, and then um, their friends will answer the quiz. So these are all mark. So, you know, it's not, um, so they will do it, you know, usually people, if it's if it's mark if it's if it, if it has weightage they will do it um you know they won't feel like it's something that's kind of useless so it feels like okay it's gonna it's gonna give give us marks another flip classroom that i did was um let's see if i can show this to you <clears throat> yeah so i where is it so this is for my science communication class. So it was a sci-fi class. So I gave them class outline um, and then I numbered the class outline. And then, so, um, <coughs> sorry. And then I asked them to find, um, search for each of the topic and uh, based on the number. I mean like one student, one number, search for a topic prepare your lecture note. It can be a PowerPoint or it can be a note and then record your lecture on the topic via the voice note. So this is how I do it. Um, plus delegation. Um, so this was this was two hours class. Um, so everyone was assigned except for two students. They are uh, in charge of compiling the recording and the lecture notes. Um, these two, two students are usually the most active ones. So I asked, I, you know, rather than um, you know, just give the opportunity for the rest of the class to be active this time. Uh, <laughs> so this timeline was quite ambitious and obviously uh, it took me more than an hour to get their answer because, you know, we as lecturers, we thought that it's easy to find uh, to find sources, but for them, the first time to um, search it, the first time read it, um, and then they have to choose the highlights of the, um, this, uh, the topic. So that's why it took them sometimes to, you know, to upload the lecture, to record the lecture. But um, what happened then, once they record it, so these are the list of the, this, these are the examples of the lecture notes that they provide. Um, these are also one of the, sorry, um, this is another lecture notes. This is another lecture notes. So it's good. It's a good thing is that I managed to get them involved rather than we keep doing our own um, lecture notes and present it to them. Now they can do it on their own. And then um, at the end of the lecture, let me check whether I have that. Um, so so you, this is the compilation. Um, not sure. I think this is the compilation um, video. So, and then I upload the compilation of the video on the spectrum so they can listen to their voice and then, um, you know, um, they contribute to the lecture notes. But one thing that I did was. Hello, everyone. So, hi. so yeah, this is an example. So, it's a compilation of everyone's work okay it's just starting from the beginning so what i did apart from getting their answer is also for each of the voice note each of the lecture note i 
provide feedback through voice note as well. To be honest, um, conducting voice note on WhatsApp via lecture is quite, um, for me, it's quite easy because it's there, it's instant. Um, but it's, and then also the good thing is you can track whether your students are listening to it because you can, you know, you can check the info and you can see who has not, who hasn't listened to the voice note. Um, so that's the voice note. Um, also, I did a lecture via WhatsApp. One of my concern with this online learning is um, based on the survey that we did uh, at the faculty level, more than 50% have problem with the internet. So I try my best to, you know, not only do everything uh, through Google Meet, I also did a lecture via WhatsApp. So what I did is I upload the, um, not the PowerPoint, but I upload one slide and then I provide, and then I record my voice um, giving them lecture on that slide and then give them a pause um, and then proceed to the next slide, next slide and next slide. So, um, so the good part is one of my students volunteered to compile the rest of the video uh, to, to compile the PowerPoint slides and the lecture and the voice as a video so I can just upload it on Spectrum. But the good part is it's also use less data for them. I think that's all from me. <laughs> Initially, we talked to I talked to Dr. Zahi. I said 40 minutes will be quite long, but uh, surprisingly, it wasn't. So I think I can have um, Q and A, and I can stop presenting now. If we have question, um. So there are two people uh, ask, uh, yeah. putting up their hands, uh, Dr. Oh, okay. and Dr. Yasmini. So pr probably you want to ask them first. Sure. Um, that's Dr. Um, Nasriya. 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 Yep. Uh, you can unmute your mic. I don't know how to navigate. So oh, Dr. Nasriya, yes, please give me your question. Okay, so um, probably um, uh, she um, uh, raised her hand by, by mistake. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, but there are, I think, um, yeah. yes. So, so the next person who with their hands raised is Dr. Yusmini. Probably, uh, Dr. Yusmini, would you like to ask your question? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So Dr. Hazina said she like Google then Microsoft. Yeah, I don't know why. I think Google is more, um, you don't have to study to learn Google, to do Google, but Microsoft you have to, to learn. That's why it took me some time. I'm not sure about the rest, but for me, I'm quite okay with technology, but if it's quite difficult to me, I'm afraid it's going to be more difficult for people who are not okay with technology. So that's what I think. Um, yeah. Google cannot break up the room, so I think uh, I, I have not worked on break up the room, so I will learn how to break up the room, um, which is a good thing we're doing this week into my class, so we can learn um, from each other. <laughs> yeah, Natasha, we prefer Google. <laughs> um, I think I don't have any questions, and I should pass this to Dr. Yu Kong. I haven't seen him for ages, so it was good to, you know, listen to him. Thanks, Dr. Zahi, and thanks, Umu. Uh, yes? Yeah, sorry. Uh, just the intersection, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Before I hand it over to Dr. Lee, uh, uh, this is Dr. Hazina. Perhaps maybe we can collaborate later because I'm also uh, majoring in communication. <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> All right. yes, uh, actually, I have a question. It's regarding the uh, the one that have uh, difficulties in um, uh, assessing and uh, downloading because of the internet and their data. Um, in, in, besides engaging them, uh, you did mention about um, doing it um, in um, one slide of PowerPoint with the audio. Is yeah. there any other alternative um, like doing uh, uh, besides um, voice note? Uh, I, I've heard a lot of platform yeah. and uh, one of it is Dean Talk. So I'm actually exploring also that you can do a lot of things. But again, this is the 
challenge on the other side whereby the students um, had the difficulty to download and listen uh, to whatever that your lecture note is it um, via video or via audio because um, I think from Prof Karim earlier on he said the one that have difficulties is their data they can't do much except the easiest one would be audio so what do you what what's your take on that thanks um, I think I've read somewhere about the audio is the better approach, especially with the online learning. And yeah, I think I I I listen. I I knew about this through one of the edX or was it through the Light Tech conference last year? Um, but yeah, I think um, we have to keep on venturing the best way to, you know, to disseminate our lecture. Um, at the moment, I thought that WhatsApp is the best because it's voice note and then it's just a lecture. Is it just a picture? Very. And then with a very small size of picture, um, Dean talk is probably something that I would like to, you know, go and venture about. Um, but um, that's the late. That's the only thing that I know at the moment. If you have any other option, please share it here. Um, other than that, Spectrum uh, giving the lecture notes to Spectrum is the thing that we can only think of at the moment. Yeah. Um, one of the questions is from Dr. Tang Tak Chong. It looks multi-channels to do teaching and learning by students. Is it just good to keep one or two such as Spectrum and MMS teams? Um, we actually have discussed it at the faculty level. And when we discuss it, uh, apparently every lecturer have preference and also students come up with the comments and feedback at the end of the semester saying that there are multiple, um, multiple, you know, platform and make them confused. I think, as I said, Spectrum is my main um main documentation but whatsapp is where i discuss with students because i um even though spectrum has um you know the forum part but it doesn't you know here is you can do it instantly <laughs> so that's rather than the uh, forum you have to go and then you have to open the forum it takes time and it probably takes your data so that's why i think um you have my my way is I have to have one communication part. One is where another communication part is where I give everything for them um, to access. So, um, but I think because university use Spectrum, but they also buy the MS team. So I think university have to decide. I don't know. Uh, so maybe Dr. Zahir can comment on that. Um, other than that, I think, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Dr. Zahir, and thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nur Aini. Sorry, I uh, didn't remember your name <laughs> from earlier. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, Dr. Yukong, uh, so that then uh, you can uh, continue uh, and take this to the end. Up to you, Dr. Yukong. <laughs> okay, all right. Thanks, Sahe. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right. Uh, Everybody else also can hear you. All right, great. Okay, hi Zahe, hi Ayn and uh, the rest. Hope you can see the slides. If you can't, uh, then just let me know. So I'm going to, uh, thanks for this opportunity to share. Uh, and I think uh, you'll find that this, this, this one is a bit different because it comes from the medical program, but uh, I'll try and make it as, as uh, relevant to everyone, as broad uh, relevance uh, as possible. So I'm, I've titled out my my talk, Applying Design Thinking in the University Malay Medical Program, uh, specifically on the class that I teach, the Culture, Local Beliefs and Religion class. Uh, so I'm actually a psychologist by background, but I'm based in the clinical department in the Department of Primary Care Medicine. Um, and uh, that's why I, I usually am tasked to teach uh, this class because of uh, my background in psychology. Uh, okay, so uh, the talk outline is the UMMP. I'll introduce you to the UMMP program and what we've done for classrooms. So it, it actually ties in very, very nicely to Dr. Uh, Nura Aini's uh, uh, faculty uh, experience, where it's, a, where it's a mix of, it's almost like a like an open marketplace. You can choose any platform uh, and any kind of uh, format that you want for your class. In the UMMP program, it's very, uh, very controlled. So I'll introduce you to some of these controls. Uh, there's also the I'll introduce you to this process, the design thinking process, and how I applied it in the class that I taught. And I'll share with you some screenshots of um, what happened in the cultural, local beliefs, and religion class. And finally, uh, wrap up with some lessons learned. Okay, so this is this is very often the uh, experience where you teach an online class, at least for me. Uh, it feels like this. Uh, 
and then I start. Hi, how is everyone uh, today? H hello. C can you turn on your cameras, please? No. Anyone there? A anyone heard of our our topic today? Uh, culture. Culture. Anyone? 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 Oh, okay. Thanks. I see. Uh, uh, Zahe has replied. Zahe, can you tell me more? Zahe, 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 are you there? Anyone? Anyone? So, if if, if you're like me, you're getting more and more desperate as the class progresses. Um, and this was this was the main challenge that I wanted to try and uh, address when I taught this class. Uh, the UMP program is very different. It, I, I think all of you have, have seen uh, Zahir's spectrum and I, I spectrum. I'll just show you a screenshot of the way spectrum is laid out for the UMP. It, it's so different that we have our own spectrum page. Uh, you can see it's it, there, there are no semesters. Uh, there are just this this uh, strange things called blocks and there are things called stages. And roughly each stage is uh, one year. So stage one, stage two, stage 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. You'd be wondering why don't they call it year one to five, uh, but that's the way uh, the medical program is set up. So what happens in this program uh, is that each, each uh, block has got a, a set of uh, topics that students receive lectures on. Uh, and what happened is during the pandemic, the UMMP program centrally coordinated by a unit called the Medical Education uh, and Research Development Unit adopted a flipped classroom format. So if you see in the middle there are the lectures, uh, there are the, uh, so every lecturer uh, was given training on how to do a voiceover PowerPoint. These were then uploaded one week before uh, the, the the, 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 the lecture slot that you were given. And then during the, what was usually the one hour lecture slot, uh, you were asked to do a one hour online discussion. And this one hour online discussion was very templated, was very controlled. So the time of course was one hour. Uh, it had to be done on MS Teams uh, and it had to be recorded. Uh, the reason for this was because uh, the coordinator wanted to make sure that all the material was captured so that if ever the switch to online uh, learning was questioned by the MQA, he had the material ready in the in a very specific format in order to show uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 uh, MQA that we had met the criteria for uh, the medical program. Okay, of course, because, in medicine, yeah? Uh, um, you can't see your spectrum. You can't see my spectrum? Yeah, you, you, you're sharing your... Uh, oh, no, 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 I, I just showed you. Okay. I'm going to stay in PowerPoint, yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. Spectrum looks like that, yeah. But, uh, uh, so, so we have our own Spectrum. Uh, so, but this, are, this was the way the lectures were set up. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the procedural skills. Uh, we had, uh, okay, I, I, won't, I won't touch on this stuff, but uh, there was a way to teach the uh, uh, clinical procedures to the students as well. Okay, so my topic was uh, distinguishing between uh, culture, local beliefs, and religion. Uh, and uh, it's part of this first uh, stage when the, when the students first join. They've never, uh, these are all year one students. Uh, and the idea is that you want to introduce them to uh, the broader philosophy and the history of medicine. So very, very, very much aligned with uh, what uh, Dr. Aini's uh, topic is about. Uh, so medicine is, uh, there are also other beliefs about health. Uh, not just the ones that you're going to learn over the next five years. So uh, the, the three specific things that uh, they needed to cover in this one-hour lecture were dis to distinguish between cultural and religion, identify areas where cultural beliefs intersect with, uh, uh, with med medicine or health, uh, health practice, and then uh, knowing that culture uh, in impacts the way people practice and uh, believe in health, inculcate a desire in future doctors to pursue cultural competence. Okay, so this was the approach that I um, that I uh, wanted to adopt in designing this one-hour uh, class. It's called the design thinking process. It's actually a, a series of uh, uh, six steps, uh, and this one, this particular uh, uh, diagram is actually taken from the D School, which is the uh, which is based at Stanford University. So it's you empathize, you then define. Uh, so you empathize with the users, you define the it, the problem, you ideate, you brainstorm some kind of uh, ideas to solve those issues that you define. You then prototype, test, and ex assess. Uh, so it's supposed to uh, be a way of uh, getting solutions quite quickly. Uh, 
Uh, so the, em the empathy part was this one. I knew that students who uh, had come on into a uh, online class uh, would miss out on being able to converse with each other, would miss out being able to converse with the lecturer, especially in a very large class. I'll show you the numbers later. So as I hear as 40, uh, you've mentioned some of you have up to 200, mine is somewhere in the middle, mine is about 120 students. Uh, so how do you get that kind of interaction going with a class of this number? Uh, so let me show you the challenges that I face uh, in this uh, in the UMP uh, uh, class. So there were four that I I can think of. The first one is uh, this. hi Yukong. Uh, so sorry. Uh, your screen is not. I mean your slide is not moving. Next, next. Are you moving the slide? Because for from my side, I only can oh, see yeah. your first. Yeah. Okay. Let me share again. Um. Uh, the Yukong, yeah. perhaps you can share your desktop instead if mm. it's not working. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, is this clear? Yes, we can see the presentation. Okay, so it moves, it moves now, right? Yeah, right. Thank you. Oh, okay, right. So this was spectral. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I didn't know there was not moving. Uh, so I've got one hour online discussions. Uh, I've got a topic. Yeah, this is the topic. Uh, uh, it's about culture and religion. Uh, and this is the design uh, thinking process uh, that I was applying when designing the class. So it's from uh, the Stanford School, of, uh, the Deed School, they call it. Uh, so you empathize with the students. You define the issues that you face when uh, delivering a class. You ideate you, uh, to get to bring some ideas of how you want to deliver a class. You prototype this idea. You test and then assess at the end. So my 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 point of contact for empathy is this one. I knew that students who uh, uh, were coming into online class wouldn't have the chance to interact or converse with each other because um, because of uh, the the issues that I'll show you. Uh, so the next stage was to define the issues. Okay, so these are the four issues that uh, that I that I can think of for my class. The first is the size. So I've got 120 students. Uh, they they are given a PowerPoint, uh, a pre-recorded PowerPoint before the class. But you know they they receive maybe maybe five or six of these PowerPoints in a, in a week. So do they have time to go and watch PowerPoint, come for class, watch PowerPoint, come for class? I don't know to what degree is their engagement. Um, so it cannot be too uh, too jumping right into the topic. Uh, so the next one is the format. Uh, if I repeat my PowerPoint, will they feel bored? Uh, also, I don't have the lux luxury of having a 14-week class. I just have a one-off session with them. Uh, they won't get to know me. I won't get to know them. But how do I still create some kind of community, some sense of uh, uh, connection so that they're willing to, 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 to share? The next one is the platform. I needed to keep it simple because uh, of the rules that were set by Merdu. Uh, it has to be native to MS Teams. I have no choice. Uh, and um, I only have one hour, so I really need to be able to, to sit within the platform uh, and reduce the cognitive load of having to explore how to introduce new software. Uh, the fourth one is actually to tell a story. So I wanted to, to have 120 students all trying to participate in some way in the course over the one hour. Uh, so I wanted to have uh, multiple data points that allow some kind of narrative or story to emerge across the, the one hour time frame. Uh, on a more personal note, I, I really like to try and make the abstract relatable. Culture, health, and religion can be very abstract. Uh, I also want to help to try and push back against uh, the racial polarization that we have in our society. So how can I introduce aspects of that to help people to open up to being uh, culturally competent, uh, not just as doctors, but also as individuals. So the next one is actually to ideate. So to brainstorm radical ideas, to build on others' ideas, and to suspend judgment. These are the, uh, the, 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 uh, the guidelines from the D school. Okay, so I stole two ideas. I'm not, I'm not shy about saying where I stole the ideas from, uh, from two sources. Yeah, the first one on the left is you see it's uh, called the Rain Classroom. Uh, that guy is not the founder of Rain Classroom, but Rain Classroom started in Tsinghua. Tsinghua University is uh, the sec. I think it's probably uh, number one or number two in China, next to Beijing, next to Peking or Beijing University. Uh, uh, they have. Uh, I visited. 
uh, maybe two, two or three years ago, they are, they are online learning center. They have the third largest MOOC provider in the world. Uh, at that point, I'm sure by now it's grown even larger because their market is in China itself. Um, and so if you talk about scale, uh, no one can do scale like China like China can. Uh, we all know that. Uh, um, and so what they did in their classrooms, they realized with so many students, how do we, how do they, uh, how do we get students to be able to interact with the lecturer uh, when you have many, many students, maybe even distributed students across different uh, different parts of China. And they and they actually built a platform called the Rain Classroom. Uh, so I, I just copy pasted it from their website. It's a new type of smart toolbox for teaching, uh, but uh, it's been designed to use in a blended learning model. And it allows for live commenting and posting feature available during classes. So they showcase this by showing that when the lecturer turns on a PowerPoint, students can actually interact with that PowerPoint through their WeChat on their phone. So the phone becomes a way for them to uh, let the lecturer see what's happening real time during the class. Uh, of course, it's a bit strange because culturally, the, the, the Chinese students like to uh, show emojis floating across the screen. Uh, but they took what the students like and put that into their PowerPoint plugin. And so you'll be teaching a class and then they'll be like, great job coming across your screen. Uh, and so I was trying and I was trying to see how that's possible within the, the platform that I'm confined to MS Teams. And then the next one that I stole the idea from is uh, this guy called uh, Hans Rosling, who passed away, I think, three years ago. Uh, and you can see the write-up from uh, his very famous TED Talk is this. Uh, you've never seen data presented like this with the drama and urgency of a sportscaster. Uh, yeah, with the drama and urgency of a sportscaster. So if you've if you've not seen this TED Talk, what happens is he has these dots that keep moving. And as the dots, and which are actually statistics, are moving in real time, he's giving some kind of running commentary on how the dots are moving, how the world is actually developing across history. So whether it's poverty or whether it's war, or whether it's disease, he's giving you a uh, he's summarizing uh, data uh, into a very uh, kind of like on the go, on the fly kind of commentary. So I wanted uh, to maybe capture some of the energy from these two things that I that I seen uh, and translate that into the class. So uh, leveraging the MS Teams layout. Uh, so I knew that this was how students were going to view my class, uh, which is what we are today. I just took this screenshot just now. So you've got a middle screen where your PowerPoint will be number one. And then number two and three is where there will be some kind of chat box. Uh, and, and in MS Teams, it's, it's actually quite good because if you use PowerPoint native within MS Teams, you can actually have this view. You don't lose the chat function. The chat function is always available uh, to you. Um, so the prototype, it was quite easy. Uh, so I, I knew that my content had already been delivered. I just needed to decide which points I wanted to discuss uh, or get students to interact with in the one hour. I then designed activities that utilize the native features of the MS Teams uh, layout as well as the chat. And then I needed to be able to insert PowerPoint instru instructions into the PowerPoint uh, window that I was using. And then I uploaded into Teams uh, as per uh, those instructions. So the testing, let me show you how it went. Um, okay, the first one, uh, this was the first slide, and I wanted to uh, give instructions. Uh, it's more like a label to myself uh, so that I don't forget what the instructions are so that students can easily identify what I want them to do. I, I try to uh, highlight all the instructions in yellow. So the first one I did was in Teams chat, put out a picture of yourself doing something you enjoy. Knowing that I've never met students before, the students have never met me, I thought, Maybe some kind of ice breaking would be nice, but this failed totally. So nobody put up any pictures. Uh, I was getting very nervous at this point. Uh, so I just said, is anyone there? Hello, anyone? No pictures? No? Uh, so I asked them to put, uh, uh, you know, if you're there, just put a thumbs up. Then I started getting some interactions inside that felt a bit uh, more relieved. So off the cuff, uh, coming back to what Hans Rosling did where he uh, got data points and he just made comments on it. I tried this style of, uh, uh, you know, if you have, if you are, if you are, think about your cultural competency, are you able to treat a patient who believes strongly in traditional medicine on a scale of one to 10? Uh, where would you be? And you can see that they put six, eight, seven. So I'd be like, oh, okay, some people are six, some people are seven. Some of you are already very confident that you're able to treat a patient who believes strongly in, med in traditional medicine. Uh, and then, you know, going down the list, the, the third one, 
can I work with traditional healers? Okay, how many of you, if you if you uh, need to, if your patient says that she's also receiving treatment from a sensei or, or a bobo, would you be comfortable to call that person up and discuss the treatment plans? And then you can see that they started commenting. They say, okay, so it looks like it's really difficult for some of you. A lot of you are four and five and some of you are six, but no one above seven. So just, just you know, uh, getting them to to interact through numbers and then making some kind of commentary uh, on how you're scoring. Okay, so the next one is uh, uh, this one. I I wanted them to start to interact a bit more. So I, I, I asked them to put up a picture of a cultural practice that someone from who's not from your culture would find positive. And it's, it, this was where it started to pick up a bit. I, I started the ball rolling. You can see the, the my name is there, Liu Kong, but I posted a picture of this Chinese oil that someone had given me for my son's uh, colleague uh, to rub all this stuff out and then people went ha 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 and then they started posting rhino water someone posted uh, this box and uh, then people started asking each other what's this it's a box it's called the Syria. i've never seen that before um, and then someone started posting scott's emotion and you can see the kind of responses that were created within the chat box itself on uh, some people gave a thumbs up, some people gave a like, some people gave a sad face actually. The sad face was, I drank this as a kid too, it brings back terrible memories. So I'm, I'm starting to see a bit of pickup. This one was probably the one that uh, students had the most fun uh, with. So I wanted to introduce them to the, to the idea that you can also compare between cultures using a set of uh, uh, defined cultural uh, uh, denominators or, or factors. So Hofstra, this one is a very uh, classic example where you have uh, you compare cultures in terms of individualism or uncertainty avoidance or power distance. So they, they started uh, putting in different uh, countries, uh, asking them to look for something that's similar to Malaysia. So how well do you know Malaysian culture versus other country culture? How well do you know Malaysia? Uh, in terms of the difference from other countries' cultures. And then they started uh, posting lots of uh, screenshots of the different countries that they were experimenting with in this website. And when, even when I was a bit unsure about some of the definitions for some of these um, cultural factors, they themselves went and looked for uh, the, the true definitions and put in what is low, what is high. Uh, they put in the links uh, to help clarify some of these definitions. Uh, and and it, it was good because it didn't feel like I was uh, struggling to explain uh, what it was. Um, they explained it themselves. Okay, the the next one is this components of religion. So um, I actually went out a bit of the MS Teams chat to, but it was still native to MS Teams in terms of the notes. And you can see that once I started exiting uh, the MS Teams platform, uh, it was difficult for some people. Uh, so Jolene asked in this read, uh, where can they find the notes section? And But she got guidance from her other friends. Uh, you can find it in the language in medicine, notes between files and spectrum. And so they started putting in uh, more, anon more anonymous, these were anonymized uh, feedback on religious beliefs that they had seen in their family, which were related to health. So you can see some of the things they put in. Drink water if you're sick drink rhino water. Uh, my grandmother thinks that the food outside is not so clean, so we always have healthy food when we're at the hometown. So people started putting in lots of interesting things. Um, okay, the last one that I asked them to do was again coming back to the, the whole Hans Rosling idea uh, of having a, a scale and a moving set of numbers to help uh, them participate. Uh, so they had, uh, there was this uh, model of uh, uh, steps that you need to do to be culturally competent. And you can see that um, uh, when you ask them how aware of you are my biases and prejudices, okay, it moves, it moves them from awareness to having a desire to, to want to be culturally competent. So some of them were, uh, were, quite, were quite extreme. They put in zero or five. Um, some of them were very confident they put in eight. So you just, I'm just making comments as they went, as they, as they put in their, uh, as they put in their numbers and try to try to relate that to what people needed to do or where, where I felt the class uh, was going uh, in terms of their awareness of this issue. Um, okay, so the last one is actually this assessment. So I, I, I think at the end of the day, I was quite happy that I managed to limit it to, to two platforms. So that I, I just used the, the MS Teams uh, suite. So the chat, the PowerPoint, the notes, kept it there, and also the browser, uh, which I think is not much uh, work to go outside. I, I managed to get uh, total of 253 comments, uh, which is which is more than double uh, what the what the what the 
uh, what the, the previous classes uh, had. Uh, most of them had very had much fewer. Uh, but I think the, the other one, the previous was 100 something. So this was 253. Uh, but of course, a lot of them are just numbers. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, and also, it's only one voice. It's not much of a sports caster effect. I wasn't as exciting as Hans Rosling. Uh, but it was an attempt at, at getting uh, that kind of data points. Uh, to form a story. So interaction was strictly mentioned in the cost evaluation. So you can see, I think the first one is, uh, it says that because it was interactive, it kept them more focused uh, during that one hour. The second one says that it was interesting that through the chat function and, and being very clear what they needed to share about students could learn something new from each other. So there's a bit of peer learning there. I think the third one is actually the one that uh, I was very surprised. The lecture is very informative. Actually, I'm not really an expert in this area of cultural health. Uh, I do a bit of research, but not really a, a theoretical expert. So I, I think what was happening is a lot of learning was happening. So they felt that the lecturer was the one uh, who was very informative. But actually, the, a lot of the information came from the students themselves. Um, so my take home lessons are uh, don't be afraid to leverage the platform restraints. Uh, and just, just think about the way that the platform restraints can uh, can help, uh, can be used to facilitate interaction. I think the second one is that students love to tell their stories. I was very surprised. The picture one, put up a face. I thought this is an Instagram generation. They would be willing to put up a face, but none of them did. But when it came to telling stories, when it came to posting pictures about their, uh, about their, the, the kind of things they, they associate uh, with culture and health, uh, they were quite willing to do so. I think the design thinking process um, is a very helpful tool uh, when trying to design lessons. Uh, the the three, three things were the first three, uh, the most important things were the first three, to empathize uh, with the students and what struggles they might face within, the, with, within this uh, classroom format, to define the issues that I wanted to address, and then to think of ideas or steal ideas in my case, uh, uh, to turn the lesson to something that uh, the, the way I wanted it to be. Okay, so that's the kind of my uh, Okay, uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, Okay, so uh, does anyone have any uh, questions or comments? Um, you can just unmute your mic if you have any question for Dr. Lee. Yeah, hi, Dr. Lee. This is Dr. Lina again. Uh, hi, 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 Lina. Hi, yeah. Uh, Dr. Lee, um, just now when you mentioned about engaging with students uh, via using a MS, MS team, uh, the meeting chat, eh, the chat, um, do you encourage them to download the app so that they can consistently um, engage with you or ask questions whenever they have or is just uh, within that one hour of discussion? Oh, uh, so because uh, actually it's just a one hour discussion in medicine, it's uh, like I said, we, we, we actually miss our students. We, we don't have the luxury of a long term uh, semester with the students. So it's, it's, it's just like really, I, I just see them at one time. Lah. So your 200 plus comments is within that one hour range. Yeah, within that one hour. Yeah. What about uh, what about the communication after that? Do you encourage them within the fourteen weeks of uh, semester within that one semester? How do you engage? Do you also encourage the offline? Because I know MS team also um, they can also chat um, outside from your lecture and tutorial uh, time. Actually, actually, I, I don't. Yeah. So so that's one of the one of the. Things about medicine, you 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 see them, and then you it's like touch and go like that. But that, that's a that's a that would be an interesting thing to to have topics that continue the conversation after the class has ended. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually, 
usually our culture is the student will get the heat after two hours lecture, <laughs> then you, they start the ball rolling of asking all questions after two hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in, in medicine, it's like we don't we don't get the experience. Uh. One of some of the things that we, we, we miss out on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your input, Dr. Lee. Okay. Uh, so I've got, uh, okay, sorry, I, I didn't see the comments just now, but thanks, Zahe, for sharing about the, yeah, the bad stats you've ever seen. I think that's the one that I was watching as well. Uh, and uh, Scott's emotion, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, on the use of notes again. So, so Nastra, actually notes is uh, almost like a digital whiteboard that's native to Teams. So you can you can actually ask them to, uh, in uh, on the go, just go to the link and then they can start putting in uh, 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 comments or draw or paste pictures. It's, it's, it's a free form whiteboard. Okay. Yeah, Chandran. Uh, Chandran came to my department. He uh, he he trained us on how to uh, do public speaking uh, for PhD students. Our UMP is not semester based. Yeah. So we don't have fourteen weeks. Uh, thanks, we know for the correction. Uh, okay. Any any other. Okay, any other comments or if not, then uh, I'm quite happy to end the session. I have one question, Doctor. I'm Aini. So, <laughs> um, because I think it's interesting uh, while doing the teaching and then get them to get involved rather than, do you have any question? Usually, no, no question. There'll be rarely to get any question in my class. Um, but I think, I just want, to know when you run all this question or maybe having all this chat going on while you're teaching, do you find it um, difficult to, you know, keep focus? Because at the same time, you have to entertain them. But if it's in real class, they have to put up your hands and then you have to give them way or that you have to say, OK, wait, let me finish this first. So how do you how do you experience this? Yeah, so there was a bit of that trying to think on the fly kind of thing, uh, but, but it's so it, it could be a bit distracted because sometimes you stop and then the comments keep coming in. Uh, but uh, I, I think there was there's a bit of a challenge to balance it. Uh, it. It can be a bit disorienting sometimes. It's like people post that and then they, you, you're not sure which question they're answering. Maybe it's a lag in the in the internet or something. But by and large, it, it seemed to work well to give energy to the class to respond as the comments were coming up. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so I hand back to uh, Zahir. Oh, Umu, yeah. Umu, Umu. <laughs> Umu. Uh, back to you, Umu. Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, maybe Dr. Zahir want to say like just a closing for this session. Um, then we can um. I'll provide the feedback form later and we can, you know, just take a break for lunch and everything. Thank you. All right. So uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, Dr. Nur Aini and uh, Dr. Yukong. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, three different styles of, of uh, conducting our uh, classes. Uh, which is um, a very um, uh, eye-opening. Uh, I really liked how uh, Dr. Nodaini um, actually uses um, the WhatsApp to um, deliver uh, the class and still using the spectrum. And then, uh, of course, Dr. Yukong uh, with uh, the, uh, what's that guy named? Uh, Hans Rosling uh, uh, style of um, doing uh, lecture with, uh, with the running data, with running numbers. Um, wonderful, uh, wonderful sharing. Hope uh, we have more people to share their class practices. And it's not uh, because uh, we wanted to show off uh, things. It's actually uh, so that we can uh, share and we can actually learn from each other. And I can see that um, now um, Dr. Hazlina and Dr. Aidy and probably Dr. Yukong is going to go into uh, 
to do some work together. So it's, it's also a networking event, isn't it, for us to do more work, more research to uh, better the uh, the learning experience for our students. So uh, thank you very much, um, Umu, for giving me the, the chance to share a bit of a, like a closing remarks. Uh, go back to you, Umu. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye. All right, bye. See you in our next session. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.